All right, let's, let's uh, I think number two is driving you guys a little crazy. I don't blame you. So I, my, so give me, give me, uh, I, I think, so I two, the limit is supposed to be zero, right? Which, which means I can start with an open circle. I can see if it gets filled in later. It doesn't matter. And I know there's got to be lines coming from both sides because that captures the limit exists. So that means both sides have to agree. Is that cool? Okay. Now, what's the next place where something interesting happens limit wise? Is that zero, right? What's the limit as x goes to zero from above? So I got to go to negative one from above, from above that. And what's the limit as x goes to zero from below? So I gotta be going like that. I can't remember where the next place is. Do you guys see what I mean about start with your limits? If you start with your points, your brain goes, connect the points. And that's not true. The connections are related to the limits. Limits all about, I'm going down a road, where am I going? Points are all about, I'm here. I'm here. It has nothing to do with lines. Does that, does it make sense? Okay. Um, what was it? Was it negative ten? If I remember correctly. What was another limit? Five. Oh, okay. So at five, what's going to be at five? Then if it's negative infinity, what's it mean to have a limit be negative infinity? Both sides have to be. Right. Shot your classic black hole. Look at there. So now wow. Wow. Okay, and then where was uh, another limit? Was there another limit problem? Limit at negative three? It's two. Okay. So then at negative three, it's two, the limit. It doesn't matter. So. All right, that's all the limit stuff, right? And now I'll fill in the points. Notice how, what's f of negative three? Two. So that fills that in. I didn't have to know that ahead of time, and now I can just fill in it. Or I can even, if I wanted to, just take that away and go, and just go straight through, right? Pothole is filled in, now the road works. Where's another uh, function value? I think here was negative one, right? F of two is negative one? Yep. And isn't there one more? Yeah. Oh, F of zero is zero, right? See? See how those don't tell you shit about where the function is. You just fill those in. If you put them down first, your brain wants to connect them. So don't do that to yourself. Focus on the limit stuff and then just put the points in. Maybe, maybe. See that, I love that kind of problem because it makes you analyze and really understand what it means for a limit to exist somewhere. It means it has to go to that point from both sides. And then the specific from above and from below, that really makes you really understand that. Yes, sir? So really we could have drawn whatever we wanted between yeah. those limit points. Here you could have done anything, right? I mean, as long as it goes through this point here, let me just make it a point again. You can go, hoi my, or you can go, oh, jump, jump, jump. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever leads to the sound effect you want, right? <laughs> what, yeah. As long as it's a function, I love it when people do this and then they do something where uh, it comes back on it, it goes, wah! So I'm like, no, it's not a function that it didn't pass the freaking bird one. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, did I turn you on? That would be helpful. Yay, I did. Uh, number one, um, where's the first discontinuity we hit? Yeah, so there's a jump at x equals negative three. And a removable at x equals 6. Good. Those are the two that are really well defined. There's a removable. Oh, crap. How do you spell removable? Yeah. x equals 6. There's an infinite at x equals who again? 3. 3. That one you can kind of argue is sort of a jump, but it's it's really the infinite part is what trumps it. But that word has only one. Uh, you could argue that it's some kind of weird infinite jump because the other side has an actual finite value, but mm, it's an infinite discontinuity at x equals 3. Is that, is that cool? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the third one was that piecewise 
function. Oh shit, what was it? Is this square root of x minus 1, right? Yes. Top one's x. x, x less than equal to negative 1, right? And then x greater than equal to 1, that? Like, yeah? Okay. So each of these are functions that are listed in that theorem as being continuous on the domain. So that is not something you have to investigate. What's wrong with this, though? This is a kind of an evil thing. Yeah, at zero, there's a discontinuity inherent. So I feel kind of bad for telling some of you guys, you don't have to worry about This function is continuous on its domain, but its domain does not include zero, so there is a discontinuity at zero there. So where is this function continuous? Well, is it continuous at negative one? G of negative one is negative one, and the limit as x goes to negative one of g of x from above is also negative one. So it's continuous there. So it's discontinuous. What do we got so far? We got so far we got it's discontinuous at zero. Where's the other point I got to check out? One. So at one, this is one, and at one, this is zero. Shit. So it's discontinuous at one also. It's fine at negative one. It was an open circle on this side, but this side filled it in. No problem. They removed it. So then officially, the way to do this is negative infinity up to zero, union with zero up to one, union with one up to infinity. I always look at this piece as skip negative infinity to infinity, skip zero, skip one. What's that little U thing there? Union means or, I love the symbol because it's like, you or you, somebody, shut do. You make a U. Okay. Uh, is that all of them? Yes. Oh, I love this. Uh, all right. One last thing, and then we'll head out nice and early today, because uh, we've done a lot today. Um, there's this old puzzle about uh, a monk climbs a mountain. He starts at 7 a.m., Starts at the base of the mountain. There's only one path up and down the mountain. You with me? So it starts at the base. You guys ever heard this one before? Stop me if you've heard this one. Right. He's not going to walk into a bar. The monk is 7 a.m., starts up the mountain, and he gets to the top of the mountain at 7 p.m. The next morning he starts, so he climbs the mountain, and the next morning he starts at, um, he goes down, starting at 7 a.m., and he gets to the bottom at 7 p.m., Prove that there's a point where he was at that point at the same time on both days. So the way to do it is interesting. The way to do it is, so he starts at the base, 7 a.m., right? So I'm going to make this my, uh, my time, and this is my height, right? So he's at zero height, let's say, and then he's at the top of the mountain, which is called H. So whatever he does, you right, and that's not necessarily the shape of the mountain. You with me? In fact, it looks like here he fell back. That's okay. He's like, oh, whoa, shit. All right, he's a little drunk because he did walk too long. The next morning, he starts at 7 a.m. But where is he? Is there any freaking way he can get from here to there without going through this? Only if you can teleport. And again, uh, it's a fever dream. He thinks he can, but he can't. He can't teleport. I don't care how drunk you are. You might feel like you did. How did he get here? So if you try to escape this thing somehow, you just can't. You got it, and then he just falls down. He just, I'm sorry, monk. He fell down. He's fine. Because now, the reason I bring this up is it, it sort of bleeds into a few theorems we're going to talk about in this class. And uh, one of these is the intermediate value theorem. This is the last thing we're talking about today. You guys got to get the idea of that? Once you set up that thing you did here, 
starting at the top the next morning, there's just no way. So that would mean he was here at the same time both days. That's what that means. That's interesting. Some of you guys are like, how does that help me buy letters? But still, I love that shit. How does that help me buy letters? Uh, I say that because I actually had students say that to me once. How does factory that help me buy letters? I'm like, I don't know. How does anything help you buy letters? Shut up. Um, so here's the intermediate value theorem. This is on page 122. 122 thank you. So say f is continuous on some interval. Let me use the same a b. Yes. A b. And n, some number between f of a and f of b. Oh, yeah, where f of a is not equal to f of b. Like then there exists. A number C in A to B. Did we do that? Yes, good. Such that F of C equals N. All right. Let's see what the hell this means. Let me draw an example of what they're talking about. So I have an interval A to B. Some function is continuous on that. Still like this. So here's f of a, here's f of b. If it's continuous, it has to not teleport or do anything weird. Right? It could have been a straight line between the two, but I'm just going to draw an arbitrary way to do this. And n is some number in between here. Now, do you see how this is almost like, you would almost call this the duh theorem. If I connect this with this, uh, with a straight line, is there any way in hell that n is not going to be an output for something in here. No. Do you, do you guys see the, the idea of this? When you start to really, and do you see how it relates to the monk dude? Yes, it totally does. So somewhere in here, in this case, this could be a few places, but somewhere in here there's at least one place, C, in A to B, such that the output of C is that number between those two. I mean, on one level you're like, please, dear God, somebody out there go, well, of course, shit. Look at all the restrictions you put on this thing. So if it's continuous, if it wasn't continuous, it could just go, no. I could just jump. I don't know if it would sound like that. <laughs> that was funny. Sorry. <laughs> no. That's the intermediate value theorem, which, which, again, if I would have just told you that, without the monk thing, I think the monk thing always helped me when I thought about it, but... Um, you might have been like, what? But, but this is all, you just can't escape. There's no way to kind of like work around it. Just like the monk can't work around. I don't want to be at the same place at the same time. Too bad, monk. Um, this, though, is huge. It's used to prove much more advanced, more complicated theorems. They reference this. So this kind of like lays the groundwork for stuff we're going to do in the future. So it's relatively simple, but it's a useful tool to use later. Um... I think that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, shit. It's pretty good. We did a lot today, so I desperately need you to get into the homework with these sections we've done and come ready with questions tomorrow. Don't forget, the very first thing tomorrow is the quiz. Well, after like 10 minutes of questions. Oh, uh, was this still 2.5? Yeah, still 2.5. This is the last thing in section 2.5. Otherwise, we're done. Yeah. With the monk um, example, can we use the, the midpoint formula to get that answer? Well, I mean, the midpoint would just find the middle point between two points, right? I mean, it's not going to necessarily show you why it would have to cross. I was just thinking, like, just for like the points, just plug in like the values for like a m p m. Never mind. But you define the midpoint, but it doesn't have to have anything to do with where he's going to be, right? Because he could go fast, he can go slow down the mountain, so it's, it doesn't have to be in the middle where he meets. 
Are yeah. you just doing the time? Uh, uh, normally my quizzes are about, yeah, yeah, 25 minutes around. We'll see, though.